I uh, who has a pit bull in here? How many people have a pit bull in this room right now? Clap if you have a pit bull. Yes, three of you. Three of you. Three? Yes. Very confident with pit bulls. People always defend pit bulls too. When the pit bulls fucking somebody up, they'll be like, "It's not the dog, it's the owner." Right? And it's like sometimes if it's just you and the dog, it's the dog. Like it's the dog. <laughs> no pit bull ever stops biting you. Like, hold on, let me go get my owner real quick. <laughs> You're fucked. You're done. My cousin has a pit bull, and he's like, it's the scariest shit in the world because whenever I go to his house, it's like, I gotta like gear myself up. I have to get all this confidence to walk into the house. Like he lives in Vermont, might be in the driveway, and the dog is just at the screen door, just going crazy, like. <laughs> they won't bark until I open my car door. I'm in the car just trying to build up my courage, and the dog's like. <laughs> as soon as I open the door. <laughs> And I'm like, why does he bark like that? I hate when he does long rules. Why is he doing that? It sounds killery. That sounds scary. It's like he's alerting you, like he's here. I get up to the door and the screen's all ripped to pieces from the dog's previous murders, right? And I'm like, yo man, come let me in. He said, the door's open, just come in. I said, hey man, you should come let me in. I said, I feel like a little bitch right now. Why don't you come on and let me in? <laughs> and then he comes to the door all confident. He's like, back up, back, back. And the dog listens to him because he feeds it, right? And, <laughs> and we're walking in the house. And as we're walking in, I'm leaving no space for the dog to get to me. We are one unit. We're walking in <laughs> together. Same leg, same body. <laughs> we get in the house and he did something that people that own dogs do. This is the scariest shit in the world to me. He goes, relax, relax. And just let the dog smell you. Huh. <laughs> that is the most pressure I ever feel. <laughs> because the dog never smells an area of your body you don't care about, right? <laughs> the dog immediately was like <laughs> I put my hand down, I'm protecting the goods. And the dog started doing that thing they do. It was like lick, nibble, sniff. It was going <laughs> And he was like, you I was like, ah! And he was like, you have to be confident. You have to be dominant with the dog. I was like, ah! Rah! He said, the dog can smell fear. <laughs> I said, well, he can definitely smell the speed running down my leg then. <laughs> you put this dog away. Why do I have to go through this? <laughs> People always look at me like, big guy like you, big old arms, and you're scared of a dog? I'm like, yeah, big guy, big arms, soft nuts. <laughs> no one's in the gym like, ah, nothing's gonna ever hurt my balls again, ah. It's sensitive. People don't give animals enough space to have a bad day. Like, I, I leave environments. Like, if there's a bunch of wasps and bees and shit, I'm like, I'm not having fun at that cookout. That bar, like, I leave. They're like, oh, are you gonna run away? Yes! <laughs> yes, there's always somebody there like, oh, they're more afraid of you than you are. Or they. Like, I hate that person. <laughs> more I can't wait for them to get stung in the face. Nothing makes me feel better <laughs> than when something's like, how does it feel? <laughs> Sting them in the ear, it looks like a coffee roll. I love it. Wow, how do you know a bee can't have a bad day, though? There's never a wasp that's just in the, in his hive and the queen's like, you've been fucking up, Jimmy. <laughs> He's like, the first human I see is on and popping. <laughs> sometimes I do, sometimes I do um, cruise ships. I work on cruise ships and do shows. And this is the craziest, this is the most uncomfortable I've ever been on a cruise ship. It was got the, you know, like one, one night, so I'm a guest entertainer. So that means I can do everything the guests can do, but I can also do what the crew can do. So if you've ever been on a cruise ship, you can go like below deck and like do shit. Like you can go down there and have a good time. So I was at a party on the ship. I had already did my shows for the week. I'm at a party down there and I, I like started falling asleep because I was done, I was drinking too much. And a Filipino security guard came by. He was like, comedian, <laughs> you have to go. And I was like, what? I was like, no, I'm fine. He was like, you're falling asleep, you gotta go. So I get out this room, it's a big party. I start walking out and I walk by this little barber shop. And I'm like, oh shit. And my family owns barbershops all over Boston. We have like 10 barbershops. So I know barbershop lingo. So I see a guy in there and two girls. I'm like, oh shit, let's go. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm about to drop some knowledge. So I walk in there and I'm like, yo, what's up? I start saying stuff. I'm like, yo, you got, you got the Andes, you got the outliner, you got the, you know, you got the 1A, the one of that. He's like, I got all that. I'm like, you put your shit in barberside. I'm saying all barbershop stuff. He's like, I got that too. He's like, yo, come chill with us and drink. I'm like, that was the goal, right? <laughs> So I'm sitting there with this barber and these two, these two girls. We're chilling, having a good time, drinking, whatever. 
And eventually, I'm like, I'm gonna head out. They're like, all right, man, well, we want. I was like, I'm gonna go get some food upstairs. I'm gonna get room service. They're like, damn, we can't get room service because they're crew. They can't get it. I was like, but you can get it with me. So come to my room. They were like, fuck yeah. And I was like, fuck yeah, right? <laughs> so I'm with this dude and these two girls. We start walking upstairs. As we start ascending, one of the girls goes, nah. I'm, she said, I'm, I'm not feeling that good. I'm just gonna go back to my room. And I was like, fuck. <laughs> this is about to be over. Cause you know, the, when one girl leaves, <laughs> the other one's leaving unless she's a hoe. Like she's not going with you. <laughs> she's not like, I'll go with these two guys. Like she's out. So we get up a couple more stairs and she's like, ah, I got some food in the room. I'm just head back. And I was like, fucking knew it. And the dude was like, I'm down to stay. And I was like, all right, <laughs> all right man, come on, let's, let's go. <laughs> hang with this dude. So we start going, we get in my room, I order a burger, he orders a chicken sandwich, we're chilling. And then um, I'm sitting on, I'm laying back on my bed, he's on my couch, and this dude just takes his shoes off. He takes his shoes off and starts rolling his socks back. Just took his shoes off in my room. And I'm looking, I'm like, what the fuck? He doesn't know me at all. We just talk barbershop shit. Why is he taking his shoes off? And I'm laying back on my bed, we're waiting for the food to come, we're looking at TV. And he goes, hey man, can I come over there and lay with you? I said, what'd you say? He said, can I lay with you? And I was like, nah, man, stay over there. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> can I lay with you? Now I'm in this position where I'm like, yo, this is fucking crazy. I'm staring at the TV, he's staring at it. We're not saying anything to each other. We're just staring at the TV. <laughs> and I'm thinking, this is what girls feel like when they're stuck with a dude that they don't want to fucking... <laughs> this is how they are. They're always in this position with this dude. And I'm just sitting, I'm like, fuck, so the food comes. Right, and I'm fucking, I'm eating my burger. I'm like, <laughs> right? I'm like, yo, how's your food? He goes, I'm not hungry anymore. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> so I'm eating my food and I was just looking at him. And he was like, you sure I can't come lay with you? I said, no, nah, man, maybe next time, man. <laughs> he put his shoes back on with a smile on his face and he left my fucking room. And I told my boy that story and he goes, why the fuck would you say next time? <laughs> And I was like, I didn't really mean next time. I meant like, just get out now. Like I didn't mean, I don't really want to fuck with this dude. But I also wasn't mad at him. Like, you know what I'm saying? I wasn't angry at this dude. Like, because he was just shooting his shot. It wasn't like he's like, I'm gonna get your dick and suck it. Like I can handle it. <laughs> like I could hold my own. I wasn't worried he's gonna come take advantage of me. So I was just in there with him and I didn't want to make him feel bad. So I'm in this weird position. And one of my boys was like, you're a bitch. <laughs> He's like, you wanted him to suck your dick. I was like, no, I didn't. <laughs> he was like, when my food came, I would have been like, get your sandwich and get the fuck out. <laughs> I was like, but that's so extra. You know what I mean? <laughs> Whatever. All right, there's only one other black dude here. What would you have done? No, there's two. Hey, <laughs> what would you have done? You got to get the fuck out, see? <laughs> Everybody makes it seem like I'm a bitch. <laughs> But he was just trying, you know what I mean? It wasn't like, whatever, I can't even, it's like I'm pulling for the dude now. That sounds funny, yeah, whatever. <laughs> One of my friends was like, yo, she said, I guess you learned the difference between a barber and a hairdresser that day. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, I'm Corey Rodriguez, peace out. Woo!